Hey, verses babies. It's time for some new verses stuff. Uh, we've got some new IPs coming out, some, some new announcements from Upper Deck, and with those new intellectual properties, we are probably going to see at least a small influx of players coming in, people who are interested in the boys and Mortal Kombat and things like that. And some of these new players are hopefully going to join us in our game and go, they'll want to buy expansions beyond just those properties and get into the Marvel side and the X-Files side and the Alien and Predator, Predator side, things like that. And it's uh, really bringing to the front forefront what these newer players can do to get their hands on older sets because Versus is something like seven years old now. And uh, that means uh, some of the older sets are starting to go out of print. So um, what's going out of print? We got that that one announcement from Upper Deck that the Spider, the Great Power arc with Spider Friends and New Defenders and um, Sinister Syndicate, they said that that was out of print. But uh, here's the thing, I don't think that's true because you can still get it in the shop. You can still get it in, you can still buy it direct from Upper Deck, in fact. So I don't believe the hype that that, um, that arc is out of print. And I don't know why they said it was, but they said there would be an announcement and an announcement never came. So I think that they have um, silently retracted that. However, there are some sets that are going out of print and there has not been any grand announcement about it, but they're very getting very difficult to find. And those are uh, notably Predator Battles. That one's starting to fetch a high price on the secondary market. Um, Alien Battles is also starting to um, be more difficult to find, which is crazy because I remember when I could get that box for six bucks and now it's going for at least list price and possibly more sooner or later. Uh, Legacy is another one that's hard to get a hold of, as is Shield versus Hydra, which has got the Nullifier and the Serpent Crown, among some other goodies in there. So those are ones that did not get hyped about by Upper Deck, but they are definitely getting hard to find. And so if new players want to play with some of the stronger cards out of these boxes, they're going to have a hard time finding those. And so I want to discuss what we can do. Where do we go from here? Uh, how do we get these old cards into the hands of new players, or do we even want to make that happen at all? Or are there other alternatives? So I'm going to go through and I dissect a few different suggestions that uh, people had had some conversations in the Discord about, and uh, we'll kind of go through all of them and you can see, you know, what, what this landscape might look like in the future. All right, so first up, the I feel like the most obvious option here is just reprint the cards, reprint the boxes. I've been calling this tactic blunt force reprint because basically you just take what you have and just reprint it, put it back on the market, put it back in shops, get it into the new player's hands. For this to work, it's definitely very convenient for the new players because they just get the same box that everyone else got but it has to be incentivized on Upper Deck's end as well. And they don't do reprints that often. And we can look a little bit at the Legendary side. They have done some reprint boxes for Legendary, but they have sometimes been many years after the original sets became hard to find. Not even after they were out of print, but after they became difficult to find. Um, so they need... The, they need to have a demand for these boxes to make it worth their while to print a large scale number. Now, the, there is a slightly lower overhead than, say, printing new boxes because you already have the cards designed, you have them templated. Hopefully, if they want to finesse them at all, they'll go through and correct any misspellings or do card wording updates, things like that. But basically, the work has kind of been done here already. So all they have to do is spin up the printers and print off a new run, stock it in the warehouses and get it in, into people's hands. Um, but the demand has to be there. Will it be worthwhile for Upper Deck to print a whole new printing of an old box if most of the people in the scene already have those boxes like like the reprint has to be able to attract a certain mass number of new buyers for it to be worthwhile because right now 
you know, everybody who's in the, the Versus scene, they already have these boxes, and they don't really have an incentive to buy the new boxes. And, and they can be incentivized in different ways, but, but essentially, you're asking, you know, people to buy something that they already have, and uh, that's, that's just not going to happen for the vast majority of players. They're happy with one box, it comes with everything that they need, so why are they going to need a second box? So we'd have to have a huge influx of new players who want to play with these old cards in order to justify that, to, to make that justifiable for Upper Deck and make it profitable for Upper Deck. So uh, that's something that you want to keep in mind about blunt force reprint boxes. So um, the advantages are that there is that low overhead and it is attractive to new players because they can't, when they do come into the game, say they buy the boys battles or whatever that one's going to be called. And then they're like, oh, I want, I want the predators now because I love predator. And, but that, that box isn't there. Well, if they have these reprints, then that's attractive to new players because then they can say, oh, if I'm going to invest in this game, then I have the ability to get everything that everyone else has already. So so there's definitely some advantages to that. And, and as I said before, there's the low overhead, so it, it shouldn't take too much work on Upper Deck's part. I mean, I say this knowing that there's more work that goes into it, but relatively speaking, there's a low overhead for getting those cards out. The one thing that people have um, made known about this blunt force reprint of staples is that they don't want to pay for cards that they already have so if if they already have bought the base set they've got this xavier school for gifted youngsters they've got asteroid m they're gonna buy a new box they're gonna buy krakoa they don't want to see four slots reserved for those special locations i personally don't really share this. I think especially if you're considering them true staples and they would fit in multiple decks, then I'm fine with getting the same cards. I mean, you can say the same thing about the basic locations. Like I have so many laboratories and academies and all that kind of crap. And like, I don't really need those in a brand new 200 card box because I've got so many already. I could build an infinite number of decks with the basic locations that I've owned over the years. So in a way that kind of sucks because I do have this mass of cards that I can't use in a way. But at the same time, like with staples, if the idea is that we, we want to use them more often, then personally I'm, I'm okay with that. It also would help, uh, like I said, to get some alternate art, especially on the space and earth, to get some different artwork that we can mix together. Um, but even for the special locations like Xavier School and Asteroid M, like if you're reprinting it, then just like take a few minutes to find some alternate art and deliver that to the players. And that, that will help us feel not so bad about having to pay for you know the cards that we already own or whatever. It'll, it'll give us something a little bit different. And it doesn't even have to be like, full art or like one of the special promo styles or whatever just different art like that's all that's all I'm asking for um, I could ask for a lot more than that but like just as a bare minimum just switch up the art now I almost wouldn't say that the space and earth locations would even be reprinted so to speak because we get reprints of basic locations all the time it's just for whatever reason upper deck has been holding out on giving us more of those um, i've got tons of laboratories and academies and things like that and they do a good job of keeping them fresh with new artwork and they could do that with earth and space but for whatever reason they have been holding back on that but either way people are clamoring for the reprints of those two locations but that could be pretty easily factored into the new sets that come out as they come out as long as they're willing to actually commit some slots for those cards uh, like they should have done with the fantastic battles for example another way that we could get some of these staples is by putting them in a 200 card box as bonus cards or as promo cards or whatever they have done this before uh, when they did ban and replace where they would do a 200 card box you'd get 200 all new cards and there would be like a little a packet insert in it where they would throw in a few other cards like the the replaced cards that they banned or the promo cards with the foil on them that kind of stuff so there is a way to kind of like insert reprinted staples into boxes without having to reserve specifically four slots for it but there's probably a limited amount of cards you can do that way like i'm guessing probably eight maybe 16 max if you're pushing it but i don't expect to get 16 additional cards 
per box that I buy, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. So I'm, I'm guessing it'd be closer to four, honestly, if they included four School for Gifted Youngsters and, you know, left us to c collect the Asteroid M from the other Brotherhood boxes or something like that. Like, that's definitely something that I could see happening. But there aren't many boxes where that would be, would even be possible, because it would have to be a 200 card box, and we only get two of those a year, and one of them lately has been reserved for a brand new intellectual property. And so that would give us one box a year where we would get four cards that were reprinted as staples. And that's not a lot for if people are, you know, really complaining, especially if you start ramping this program up, people are going to start coming out of the woodwork to tell you what their staple staples are like, oh, I think Taskmaster is a staple. So when are you going to reprint Taskmaster? I think Jessica Jones is a staple. So when are you going to reprint that one? So it, it's, it just seems like there would not be a lot of opportunity to insert these cards into boxes and be able to do justice to all the staples that are in demand out there. A couple other things you could do is like sell mini packs of staples online or something like that where you don't like necessarily push them out to the stores, you don't necessarily push them out as like a 55 card box that that everyone comes together and they order but instead you just like do it as an upper deck exclusive where it's like oh you're new to the game here is a box of or here's a pack of 16 cards that you're gonna want or here's a box of 55 cards or something like that where it's like so you're you're new to the game here's some cards that you've missed out on in previous things but it'll get you up and going and and competitive real quick but then you get into the intellectual property issues which which is um somewhat unique to versus compared to a lot of other card games where you have these mixing properties together and so say you you have um predator cards and you say that a certain number of those are staples or or kane and call as part of the alien battles like those are the two cards that you want out of that box these days. How do you reprint those cards like individually? Like you can't, you couldn't jam them into a 200 card box. You couldn't mix them in with like a 55 card box of Marvel staples. You just have these different IP issues that you're going to, going to face when you're talking about reprint. So then like, then you say, oh, they will just reprint the Marvel stuff, but we won't reprint the Predator and Alien stuff. But then you know, there's still then people are going to be clamoring for Alien and Predator even more because it's going to be harder to get and they're going to want these cards to, you know, to be competitive with this whatever certain specific decks that they're trying to buy, things like that. So it was discussed that those boxes could kind of be formatted out, like we've got these featured formats, so we could say from now on Alien and Predator are not going to be available for the featured formats and that way new players don't have to worry about getting their hands on these older cards and they can and they can still compete uh, with you know the sort of even playing field perfectly level playing field that you know that that the older players get to play with but basically that's perma banning the these cards and I don't think people would be terribly happy I mean they there's going to be a certain sector of people who aren't going to be terribly happy about this because they've been playing for so long and because they've worked out these interactions with with the equipment or the cards that they want and i think that perma banning that would be a, a sweeping move considering how lightly they've used banning lately like they've banned and replaced something like four cards over the history of the game and then they've sort of solved the rest of the problems with formats and they could certainly do that with this one as well, with with these sets as well. But it's definitely would feel like a lot bigger of an action than banning targeted problem cards. And also that could affect the viability of a lot of cards and combos. Like if you ban Kane from ever being played again, then people who rely on Kane to dig for locations, they're not going to be too happy about that. And I sympathize with that, but I also am like, um, that could be kind of cool for the game to just like have, you know, have these interactions just like not a part of the game anymore. And you have to figure things out in other ways. But that does definitely affect the viability of some cards and some combos. So again, I think you would want to tread lightly when you're when you're talking about this kind of per perma banning. But you know, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Personally, I just think that uh, you should be ready for the backlash <laughs> if, you, if they decide to go this way. 
Another argument that people have with not being able to get their hands on staples is that the game is just getting more and more expensive for new players to join. And um, it probably will reach a point where it's like, it's gonna be too much to buy in and feel like you could compete with the old guard. But that, I just wanna point out that that has always been the case with this game ever since they launched the first expansion. Like they launched the base set and the base set costs 60 bucks or whatever it was. And then they launched the expansion and now the person who's coming in new is gonna have to buy the base set and defenders. And so it's gonna be more expensive for them to get into the game than it is for um, someone who already was in the game with when they bought the Marvel Battles and now they just have one expansion to buy. So I get what they're saying, but that has always kind of been a thing with Versus. Like if you're gonna get in now, then there's a, there's seven years of sets that you gotta buy. So like I said, there's probably a tipping point where that they really will have to address this in order for the growth of the game to, to remain viable, so to get those new players and, and have them get interest in the game because they don't want to put out a mortgage on their house just to just to be able to have some fun at some conventions. But yeah, the fact that someone has to pay 60 bucks for a Predator set doesn't bother me too much at this point. And the fact is those those cards, those older cards can still be found on the secondary market. So it, you might have to pay a premium for it, but you can still get them if you really want to, if you feel like you absolutely need those cards to be able to compete. You just have to put in a little bit more effort to get them. Some people say that not having these cards available is counter to the promise of the expandable card game, but I just don't think that is true. Like, it's not about having a perfectly level playing field for everybody. That's not the promise of the expandable card game. It's not the promise of versus system. The promise is that you can buy a box and everything that you need is in that box. So it's a subtle difference, but if you can buy every box, then yes, you will have the, the most advantage. You'll be on a level playing field with, with the top players, with everyone else who could buy everything. And if you can't, you won't be, but, that's, but the real thing is that if you buy a box, you get everything. You don't have to chase packs. You don't have to chase rares. You know, you, you can budget for this every month. And so I think that's the, the real promise of the expandable card game and not that just everybody gets to have what they want. Like it's, it hasn't even been that way currently because like not everybody can afford every set. And so, you know, what do, what do you say to them? Like they're not gonna get boxes for free. They just have to figure out how they're going to get the cards that they that they need for the decks that they want to build. So I feel like that level playing field is is a myth and also because there are numerous ways to gain advantage not just by having every card like that's definitely kind of an obvious way to get an advantage is to just have every card and every option available to you. But uh, like for me my biggest weakness is finding time to practice. The people who have tons of time to practice are at a way bigger advantage for playing versus than, than I will ever be. And so like, I can't just say, well, you can't practice because I can't practice. It's like, I, if I wanna do this, then I gotta find time to practice. If you want the cards, you gotta find the way to get them. And sometimes that means paying a little bit of extra money and, and honestly, in Versus System, it's not that much. Like, if you're going to try to get a winning deck in Magic the Gathering or Pokemon, you're going you're gonna to spend a lot more money. And so it's, I, I feel sympathy, but at the same time, it's like, um, I'm just trying to be a little realistic here. But yeah, ex experience, practice, time, access to the cards is another thing. Like, some shops won't get Versus cards in, and, and it's just like, that sucks. Like you are at a disadvantage because uh, your shop won't get the cards in or whatever. It's just something that you have to learn to overcome if you're if you're going to compete. I've got one more idea and about how to deal with sets that are going out of print. And honestly, this one is my favorite and that is to design new cards for new players and really honestly design new cards for current players as well. Basically design new cards that solve the problem. I'm a designer, I like to solve problems, and I think that design solutions are usually more interesting than just doing a blunt force reprint. I think that at some point it would make sense, like I said, if the demand is there, 
definitely do a blunt force reprint. But if the game is slowly growing like Versus has over the years, um, which is wonderful it's that it's growing, but it's definitely not going off like gangbusters. But if the game is growing as it has, then it's going to take a long time for people, for the demand to be there for those reprints. And so I think if I was a game designer, then I would start thinking about how I can get those effects back into the game, but have them tweaked to be a little bit different. Like for example, with the Krakoa box that's coming out, we we're talking about the Xavier School and Asteroid M and how it might be harder to get those special locations for those teams. So this is just kind of off the top of my head. I haven't really thought through all the repercussions, but what if it was possible to get a special location for a dual mutant team that also restricts you from using the school for gifted youngsters and asteroid m so in that way people who are coming into the game with these new x characters can build a team of all x-men and they can use the new location well, let's say just call it krakoa they can use krakoa as their special location to pay for superpowers for x-men teams they can use it to pay for superpowers for brotherhood teams or they could use it to pay for a mix of both. So that way they would effectively be getting a school for gifted youngsters and an asteroid M in one, but also it's like a little bit different because both of those teams can use that location. So in that way, it allows those older players to build sort of classic decks that you'd think about, but also it gives the newer players something to, something new to try where they can say, oh, I can actually mix some of my mutant teams together and use it. And, and like I said, don't hold me to this because I haven't thought through every repercussion. I haven't play tested. I'm just saying like, that's an idea for a way that you can deal with some of that, some of that reprint stuff. If, again, if you're talking about reprinting, like a lot of the old cards are weaker anyway. So like, I mean, the the Civil War box had and the Fantastic Battles, they had so much power creep that they, you know, really have a lot of contenders and they're not taking out every single older card in the game. But like if supporting characters are going to be that strong, then maybe it's time that plot twists also got a little bit power crept. And so we got some some newer more interesting plot twists than just like find cover and shock to the system and savage surprise and stuff like that like like what if we had something that gave you plus five attack on the or plus six attack on the defense i forget but basically something that's a little bit stronger and, and i wouldn't say to just like overwrite the old one completely do something a little bit different with it but basically give someone that ability to kind of use the out of print card features but like in a new way that new players can use and then that way you also get beyond the argument that you're paying for cards that you already own because you'll have something new. And I just think that this is personally my favorite solution, but I just want to finish off by saying that I'm not opposed to any of these. Like I've given pros and cons about a lot of these different ways you can do it. And so I'm not saying that if you want a reprint box just because you want to have the level playing field, I think that's valid. Like, it, that's fine. That's great. I think you should let Upper Deck know that because then they're more likely to, ser you know, be in service of you. But I think in the long term, being able to, you know, design new, new features of the game that will, that will kind of cover the the old ground while doing something new that's just personally my favorite so maybe you hate it i don't care um i'd love to hear why you think it's bad or, or whatever but you know i've i've seen this in action and it works really well and so i think that that's my favorite way to go so anyway this has gone on long enough thank you for being out here this evening with me and um hope to play across from you soon bye